يعطيكم الف عافيه اهلا وسهلا فيكم في رحاب كليه طب الاسنان كما جرت العاده استاذنا الدكتور اسامه الجبان بيقول اجمل كليات جامعه دمشق اليوم هو يوم علمي مميز مع جامعه يو دي ام اي من اسبانيا مع عميد ودايركتور معهد اي تي اي للابحاث في اسبانيا لابحاث زرع الاسنان والتعويض اليوم هو يوم مميز جدا ونحن سعداء بقبوله لدعوتنا هتكون المحاضرة لأستاذنا الدكتور لويس كوادرادو هو أخصائي في الجراحة التصنيعية وإعادة بناء السنخ والزرع وهو مشرف على برنامج زرع الأسنان من جامعة UDIMA مدريد إسبانيا وهو مدير معهد ITI2 مدريد إسبانيا وهو عميد مركز الدراسات ITI Study Club في مدريد في إسبانيا دكتور لويس We are greeting you here in Damascus yeah. University Dental School here in Syria in Damascus Your lecture is uh, Treatment of the Fully Odontolist Patient by Digital Workflow. Dr. Luis is a specialist by Reconstructive and Aesthetic Surgeon, Director and Clinical Training of Center I2 Implanto, Implanto in Madrid, Spain. He is the Director of Postgraduate Training Program in, in, in Implantation in the UDIMA University in Madrid, Spain. He is a member and the Director of ITI Study Club Madrid. Uh, we are greeting you, Dr. Quadrado. Thank you so much. From the uh, Syrian side, from Damascus University, we have Dr. Ammar Al-Mustafa. Dr. Ammar Al-Mustafa is a professor in the Removal Processes Department. He is uh, his honored uh, special specialty in oral and maxillofacial surgery. He had a master's degree and a PhD in removal processes. We are very happy that you are uh, today with us, Dr. Ammar Al-Mustafa. I think Dr. Ammar will make a small introduction Uh, for the webinar today, Dr. Ammar Mustafa, you can start your speech. Thank you, Dr. Anas. We are greeting Dr. Carlo, Dr. West, Luis Quadro. We are greeting you in our university in Damascus, Syria. We are very happy for your attendance in our university. Okay, thank you. Let me at the beginning give our student a small brief about our lecture today in Arabic. So excuse me, I will speak in Arabic for a few minutes. Thank you so much. For three minutes. محاضرتنا اليوم مع الدكتور الواس لويس كوادرو حتكون عن التدبير الرقمي لحالات الدراد الكامل. بالحقيقة كل طب الأسنان بالأيام في هذه الأيام يتجه نوع نحو طب الأسنان الرقمي. وضمن هذا المجال أيضا تدبير حالات الدراد الكامل. ف دكتور كوادرا كوادرادو عنده طريقه مميزه في تدبير حالات الدراد الكامل تعتمد على دراسه الحاله وتصوير الحاله رقميا قبل المعالجه وبحيث انه اثناء او في جلسه المعالجه سيتم في جلسه المعالجه سيتم وضع الزرعات في المكان المناسب ومباشره سيكون التعويض المؤقت جاهزا بحيث يمكن ان يوضع في نفس الجلسه، يعني المريض يخرج من عند الطبيب وهو يحمل التعويض المؤقت الفوري مع مع تحميل فوري للزرعه. طبعا بعد فتره سيغير التعويض ولكن المريض هون لن يمر بمرحله درد. طبعا الدكتور لويس كوادرادو عنده خبره كبيره هو مدير معهد الزرعات اي تي اي في اسبانيا وبالتالي عنده خبره كبيره جدا في هذا المجال وعندهم تقنيه ونموذج عمل خاص تقنيه خاصه فيهم هي اللي حيعرض لنا اياها بتوقع تكون مميزه جدا ومهمه جدا لحتى نسير باتجاه طب الاسنان الرقم دكتور كوادرادو وي جريتينج يو اجين يو كان ستارت يور ليكتشر ذا اودينس اور يوز ثانك يو سو ماتش ثانك يو سو ماتش For me, thank you so much, Dr. Amar Mustafa, Dr. Anas Abdo, and the Dean of the Damascus University for your kind invitation. For me, it's a pleasure to be here with you this morning, this afternoon, uh, to share our, our work, our daily work on, 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 on digital implantology regarding the full art. Um, I will try to start and share my computer. Uh, I think, can you see my pres the presentation? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, you can see everything. And now it's on the full screen? Yes, it's very good. Okay, okay. So thank you again. Thank you, Mim. For me, it's a big pleasure. I meet 
Dr. Anas Abdo in Beirut some years ago. And uh, we talk sometimes regarding this presentation. So finally, we have it ready, okay? So uh, as um, both of you has told the audience, uh, I work in my clinic here in Madrid, which is a clinic and learning center. And uh, we do everything regarding uh, implantology. We use the intraoral scanner only, no other hardware to take our uh, digit, our impressions, the registrations, but we use it in all the fields of uh, dentistry. I mean, ortho, uh, natural dentition, uh, prosthetics, and also, of course, implants, smile design, and everything. You know. So I think that digital, for me, digital means uh, a new brief in dentistry, it means that we are doing things in a different way. We were doing some days, some, some years ago. And of course, we are really happy to use it because we are providing our patients with a very uh, high quality treatment. And, and, and thanks to, not, not only to digital, we will say in the presentation that digital is only a part of a full workflow, okay? So I, I'm going to talk this morning, this afternoon uh, to you about, for me, this is a new implant dentistry based on immediacy. It's a full digital new implant dentistry based on immediacy. It means that we always try to provide our patients, doesn't matter if it's a single unit, a bridge or a full arch with the same day temp prosthesis. Of course, uh, uh, our implants has to fulfill all the requirements to, uh, to, to, to be able to support the load of the immediate prosthesis. But our aim from the surgery is to, uh, to, take, to have the uh, immediate loading capability of our implants in terms of uh, um, ISQ level and all the other things we will discuss later. So think please on a full digital implantology based on an immediate prosthesis same day. Okay, the concept of immediacy has changed in the recent years, in the recent 15 years, from the concept uh, uh, maybe be able to the concept is be able and now the concept is predictable. It means that according to the liter literature, we can provide our patient with, uh, uh, with um, a, a temp prosthesis um, um, in the first 48 hours of the surgery with the same uh, success rate that we can achieve with a regular treatment, okay? That's very important because if we focus all our efforts to provide that, uh, that immediate loading capability of our implants, we are on a, in a full, uh, in a complete different field of treatment. So, uh, as I told you, it's not only regarding to, uh, to full art, um, everything regarding digital is magic. For example, this case, which is a single unit, we can uh, extract the teeth, place the implant. Um, uh, of course, we have to clean everything regarding the alveolos. Uh, be sure there is no active infection there. Uh, take a nice, a nice uh, bed for our implants and place our our implant. Um, always, always trying to achieve the medial loading capability of our implants. You know, it's it's a high insertion torque. Um, I would say that 45 to 55 newtons per centimeter, if possible. And then we always take the ISQ level. Um, it doesn't matter if it's at implant level or we are placing a scurita in abutment and in, in multi-unit abutment uh, to take the ISQ level. So because of the insertion torque and the ISQ level, everything is uh, objective. We can load our implant. So now we are grafting the gap with a cover screw scanning the single unit. This is the images profile scan. We get the images profile scan with our trios, place the original Strauman scan body, scan the scan body step. So we get our file. And now this is a case made with the new software from Strauman and 3Shape, which is Design Studio, Screw and Crown, that allow you to uh, in-house or with your lab to design very easily because it's step by step, next, next, next. You can design everything. And the most important is, this is the reason I'm showing you this case, is uh, we finish with the direct connection to the milling unit and we provide our patient with a, a nice um, crown same day, uh, approximately uh, 45 hours later. 
sorry, 45, 45 minutes later. So then I, I want to show you this because it was we, we call, it, it is what we call biological design. The biological design means that this is the emergence profile scan with all the graft there. And we can push with, our, with the design of our crown all that graft to the vestibular part, uh, making a nice emergence profile. We are going to place that crown that guide our, our emergence profile and uh, 45 minutes later, we can uh, place that crown. I want to show you, to, sh to tell you that we are doing these kind of treatments even with the final material prosthesis. It doesn't matter because we take the occlusion and everything, and everything with really a great, great care and uh, place our patient with a soft diet, a liquid, liquid diet for some days. So the results are amazing thanks to digital. This is, for example, this is the post-op CT scan, and uh, and the final and the, and this is 15 days later, the control with the final material crown, with the images profile um, push to the vestibular part. So this is the biological design. This is the barrio base. That's the particles of the bone graft, bone substitute. And what we are going to, to do is thanks to the tools on the digital, uh, on dentals, on, uh, on the software, we are going to push that with the crown, that graph to the vestibular part. And even we can measure that the, the, the amount of tissue we are going to, to push to the vestibular part. It means that uh, we can control aspects uh, functional and biological aspect we cannot control in any other way. That's the final result with this patient. So everything for, for us, everything regarding implantology nowadays has to be really simple. This is an old case, a single unit case, where we, were go we are going to place the implant again, always taking care of the biology of the bone, taking high incision torque, uh, taking um, high ISQ levels for single units more than 71, and then scanning the patient, sending to the lab, and the lab can provide you with a temporary prosthesis very nicely, very quickly. So that's very differential in the practice in our practice today, because it means less fewer um, uh, appointments for the patient, and nice aesthetics, and a good control of all the biological, occlusal, and all the aspects regarding the our patient. So as I told you, for me, everything has to be simple. Everything has to be. Uh, able to be done in any clinic in the world. So when we are reaching the, the, the full arch, we have different situations. We will come in, um, into this later. But for example, I want to present you this case, which is a patient. Uh, this is the pre-op appearance with and without the um, um, partial removal prosthesis. This is with the partial removal prosthesis and without. What we are going to do is to scan our patient. This is the panel X-ray. We are going to scan our patient with trios. We are going to use the AFT system, which is a Spanish system that allow you to mix the CT, the trios scan, and all the information regarding the face with the face scanner. So thanks to that face scan, face, face scan bodies, we can mix everything in the same patient. So the lab can design from the aesthetics and from the functional point of view, a wax up of this patient uh, to be sure everything is in, co in, in the correct position before the surgery. That, that, um, with that um, um, wax, digital wax up, we make a model with the model a key, and then the day of surgery, this is the day of surgery, we provide our patient with a, a mock-up in mouth. So this is day zero, now we place the anesthesia and everything, and we are going to go in our surgery. We place, if, if, if we can, we can, we are going to make the surgery flapless, um, removing those two, two teeth, and we are going to place six implants. On the left side of the screen, we are placing the implants, and on the right side of your, of your, of your screen, you can see the implants freshly placed with the scan bodies. We can scan the patient again, send the file to the lab, and now our lab has two different files. One file is the pre-op file with the wax up in mouth, and the second one is the file 
from uh, the uh, implant um, after the surgery where we are uh, we place our implants and place our um, uh, screw retain abutments and place our scan bodies so both both files the pre-op and the post-op file has in common the two canines so we are using those two canines two canines in the lab to mix both files the one with the wax up and the one with the implants and based on that, the lab can easily design a temprosthesis. This is the two files. Blue is the pre-op file and gray is the post-op file. So we merge both files together and the lab can design the temprosthesis. The patient is waiting. I'm just remove the two canines and then we are going with the, uh, with the teleocat um, prosthesis more or less two hours later just to, to try the, the, the passive fit of the teleocat prosthesis. And now my teammate, Arturo Godoy, who, will, who lives in Mexico and works with us, with us in our clinic uh, sometimes, and he comes to our, our, our courses, are uh, making with, Nex, with Nexco the, uh, from Ivoclar the characterization of the same day prosthesis. So for... Um, Half an hour later, we have the prosthesis ready. This is that teleocat with Nexco. We can adjust the occlusion and everything. And now the patient has changed dramatically from one situation to another same day. So I want to show you that this is very simple to keep things simple. This is the aspect of the patient in the post-op period two, two, two days later. Uh, and, uh, and the change has been dramatically from this situation to, uh, to, to, uh, to that one. So the most important thing is that this is same day dentistry, full digital with the intraoral scanner with a perfect, uh, with a perfect passive feed, a perfect accuracy, and very simple to do. There are a lot of things involved uh, to get a, a, a good uh, post-op scan of this patient, of any patient of a full arch uh, that we need to summarize uh, later on. Okay, so this is very, very simple to do, very easy. I want to show you another case. This is a failing dentition patient in the upper maxilla. We have to remove the teeth and preserve those teeth, okay? So this is the patient with the implants on the left and the right using the same technique. The, the lab is designing the temporary prosthesis. Uh, Please remember, we preserve two canines on the other patient, and this patient will preserve those molar. So we have reference in mouth. I will come back to that later. So formerly, when we face a, a, full, a full arch patient, we remove all the teeth, place our implants, take our impression with silicone, and we lost all the reference in mouth. The lab has to work analogical analogically to look for those reference bows based on the, on the pre-op uh, impressions. Now with this approach, you can, pre you can preserve some teeth in place just to be used as, a, uh, as, a, as reference points, reference point to merge all the files. That's the question, how to do that in all the patients. So this is the uh, pre-op situation. This is the initial temp prosthesis, same day. We are going to place our patient, and this is the most important thing is that this is a, uh, not only a restoration for the patient, it's all, also for us a diagnostic tool. We are going to, sh to observe, to test our patient in occlusion and everything. Okay. So regarding, regarding the, 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 um, the evolution of the patient, we are doing different temp prosthesis in the four to six months of treatment. For example, in this patient, you can see that uh, she, uh, um, she, her smile on the left side is bigger than in the right side. So we need to compensate everything. So the prosthesis is telling us everything for the diagnostical point of view. What we are going to do is to make a second temp prosthesis with Arturo Godoy. We check everything. We scan the patient for the eight implants because on the first surgery, we load only six. And now we are loading all the eight implants to provide the patient with the excellent, uh, excellent uh, prosthesis, temp prosthesis. So this is our final mock prosthesis that we are going to copy on, on the uh, uh, to copy on the final. Okay. 
So this is the, the final framework with the printed model, with the perfect passive fit. And, uh, and um, we are going to test that uh, framework on our patient. And then Arturo is going to uh, use his uh, uh, amazing technical capability to create a very, very nice uh, ceramic prosthesis on top of the uh, metal framework. That's very, very, very important. Very important. So we try always to mix the best from the digital world and the best from the uh, capacity of our dental technician. More than ever, this is a work, a team work. Everything on the team has to be an expert to provide our patient with, this, with the best quality treatment. This is the step-by-step -step of Arturo with the final prosthesis creating all the um, nice uh, artificial gingiva with Emax from Ivoclar Rivadent on a, on a uh, printed model. This is the case, finished. And now we are going to place the final prosthesis to our patient on the eight implant. So this is the dental gingival prosthesis with a nice passive fit. We are placing our implants so we are changing dramatically the situation of our, pa our, our patient. We are compensating everything, the smile of the patient, we are compensating the occlusion, even the soft, uh, soft tissue support, and this is the final X-ray on a full digital workflow. It is important to notice that we do not use nothing more than the trios to take our impression. We are not using the PIC system, we are not using any kind of stereo photogrammetry, systems just with trios the question is how to do that so this is the final prosthesis of this patient mixing the best of surgery the best of digital workflow and the best of technology this is the final aspect of the patient final smile very nice case very nice case in a middle-aged woman so another case this is a case with a failing implants we are going to remove all the implants and uh, I preserve that molar, okay? So we are removing the implants, waiting for six months to place new implants. Of course, we need to make uh, some sinus, sinus lift on both sides. So we are placing, this is an old case, it's almost a five-year case where we use guided surgery with a guide to approach. This is on the, on the second uh, slide, on the second picture on your left, you can see the guide to which is a, um, a device that we use in, in, um, in guided surgery when we are facing a full arch patient without, without teeth to uh, keep the trios on the game. So that's, a, um, that's some, uh, like, a, like a partial removable denture with four to, to two teeth. We place in mouth, scan the patient, this is radio opaque scan the patient and take a CT with them. So based on that, we can match, merge both files on Implant Studio, place four implants guided, then we are going to make sinus lift, make a new temporary and then reach the final prosthesis. So uh, this is the final smile of this patient, again by Arturo Godoy, uh, changing dramatically the situation. So this is a brief introduction of what we are doing. And I want to share with you our tools. Of course, on the core of everything is the intraoral scanner. Again, we are not using any other hardware than the TRIOS. Uh, it works excellent for us from all the indications, as I told you. But there are any other, any other tools, which are, of course, the implants. We, we need to discuss about, about the implants because the implants are fundamental when facing immediate loading. Of course, we use the ISQ to take to get the ISQ levels the hostel always because it's the only objective method to be sure that your implants can be uh, loaded in um, in this kind of surgeries. And then we have the design software, and as you may suppose, the production hardware with the milling units or printing units, and then the final temporary prosthesis, the same day temporary prosthesis. Please remember, for us, this, the same day temp prosthesis. It's also a diagnostic tool. We use it, as, as always, to uh, get all the parameters involved in the treatment of our patient. That's very important. And that sometimes we are making two to three more 
10 prostheses after the first month, month of loading to be sure that we reach the final mock prosthesis. So we need to remember that with the media loading, we have the same success rate, rate, but there are a lot of things involved, as you know, in the university from uh, the way we are going to load our implants, if it's a functional or not functional, taking in care in, 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 into account the antagonist, the emergence profile, of course, we can make a progressive loading of our implants. We try to avoid the cantilever. We, we try to reduce the glucose sur surface. We need to take into account the length of the pontics and how we are going to join our implants together with the temprosthesis. And then, of course, the static load, the precharge, and the passive fit. And of course, the, to avoid lateral falls. So you know better than me all the things involved in uh, in, uh, in 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 regarding in media loading and I will this is a brief presentation so I will show you some special points of that so uh, the implant you know that the most recommended implant is internal implants conical shape with internal connection and um, very uh, it is recommended to use a, a macromorphology according to immediate loading to high to reach high insertion torque and also the surface is very important. So this is the new BLX from Strauman. We've been using it for, I think, maybe three years right now. And it's an excellent implant and it provides you with all the requirements regarding the internal connection, regarding the macro geometry and also the surface. The surface is very important because as you know, uh, it, uh, it, the, the surface conducts the uh, also integration, let's say in that way. Uh, and, and now active surface, surfaces are very important, not only to get a, a better and, and quicker also integration, but also, but also to be used on, in, on patients with demanding medical situations, could, could be diabetes or uh, any other kind of, uh, of smokers and everything. So you can be sure that if you fulfill internal implant uh, connection, uh, internal connection implants, a good macrogeometry and nice surface, your success rate will be much better according to the surgery you are doing. For example, this is the BLX, and this implant is uh, designed to uh, be used until you reach 80, 80 newtons per centimeter, but it is not recommended to, uh, to reach 15 newtons per centimeter. So once you reach 50, you go uh, counterclockwise and then you come again with your implant. So you always reach nine insertion torque and high ISQ levels, as you can see. And also the insertion of the implant is very simple because of the distance uh, of, the, of the threads. Of, uh, it it makes, makes you a quicker insertion into the bone. So. Regarding the surgical text, we are going to use more than ever progressive drilling, tar trying to, to under prepare our, our, our preparation. We are always trying to use longer and wider implants, more than ever to get uh, cortical support for our implants. If possible, try to go flapless. You know that the, the movement of the tissue is the worst enemy of the intraoral scanner. So going flapless is very important, trying to go flapless. But uh, of course, the best way to go flapless is it is, will be with guided surgery. But just in case you need to open a flap, you, uh, we recommend to use fixation sutures, suspensory sutures to fix the flaps to the bone. And of course, it is very important to, take, to have a visual control, like in this video, of the fitting of the abutment and also the scan body because most of the scan bodies in the market are not radiopaque. So you need to control the perfect fit of your, sorry. Sorry with the music. This is the suspensory suture. I don't know if you can hear me. Dr. Amar, can you hear me? Yeah. So this is the suspensory suture we make we, what we are going is to do is to, to uh, drill a hole in the bone and then we are going with, uh, with a suture that comes from the vestibular to the lingual flap into the bone. 
So we fix everything on, uh, on, on the bone. All the flaps are fixed on the bone and doing that, we can scan easily our patient and the, and the treatment can be, can be done easily. We are using also the, this is the standard technique and then going with the 10 prosthesis same day. Okay, so, uh, so I don't know if you hear me correctly with the, with the Yes, music. everything okay, everything. Is everything okay, okay. So, so suspensory sutures are very important to fix the flaps into the bone. So doing that, you can scan easily, especially in the lower, in the mandible, which are with very mobile with the tongue. And also the post, the post of period for our patient is much better. So when we are reaching, uh, um, it is recommended to use um, intermediate abutment, multi-unit abutment. In this case, we are going to use angle abutment and we are using the plastic um, set to be sure that uh, to elect, to select the correct angulation of our, our scurritane abutment. Even, even using the uh, bridge, the old bridge of the patient. And now we are placing the scurritane abutment tightening to the correct uh, the torque. And then after you are sure, we take our ISQ level, in this case to implant level and also to abutment level, placing the scan bodies. Those are the scan bodies for trauma, for security and abutment. We are sure that everything is in place, a scan and the lab can design the bridge same day. So we have a, a very nicely placed implants the, uh, the uh, abutment is um, um, correctly placed in, 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 in onto the implant, and now we are placing our bridge nicely same day, one hour later. So again, everything has to be simple. So the use of the correct implant, doing the surgery in the correct way, using suspensory sutures, going flapless, using intermediate abutment is very important to get the best results, okay? Very, very important. So when taking the, uh, when, when we reach our, we, we place our implants and take the ISQ level to implant level. In this case, this is the, the new Ostel Beacon, which is wireless and comes connected to your co computer. And you can take everything on the, on, the, on, the, uh, on the cloud. And you have all the information regarding the implants. Green, you can load your implants. Red, you cannot load your implants. So those are the curves the insertion torque uh, curves uh, taken with um, the WH motor from implants and you can correlate all your uh, uh, insertion torque curve with the ISQ level. So this is very important and we can back to this later. So we uh, use the select the correct implant, doing the surgery in the correct way, place our implant in the correct positions, use the correct design in the macro and micro aspects of our implants, going flapless or suspensory sutures, placing intermediate abutment and then, can, and then taking ISQ levels to be sure in an objective way that we can load our implants. So the TRIOS is the only one we are using and we are going to, uh, we are talking about it. We, we have two, th two TRIOS 3 and one TRIOS 4 in the clinic and we use it for all the indication. But the most important thing is to use the correct uh, scan bodies and also the correct uh, the, the correct scan bodies and also the correct libraries to make your uh, your ten prosthesis. It means that from the very beginning, when you are planning your case and doing your surgery, you need to be sure how you want to produce your ten prosthesis and the final prosthesis. It means that each scan body is the key that opens your treatment. And each scan body comes with its own library for the dental technician. So you need to select and to know in advance how, what can you do with those scan bodies. For example, if you are using the original Strauman scan body, maybe you are not allowed to mill in lab or in house a full arch in any kind of material and you have to send it to a production center. So. First, first you use, before you use uh, uh, any scan body, you have to be sure that fulfills that scan body and then the library fulfills all your requirements. All your requirements, it may be to go with a, a titanium base or without the titanium base, 
So you have to control everything from the planning phase of your, of your, of your case, okay? And then you go with the 10 prosthesis where it can be milled or it can be printed. And then uh, same day you can reach with a fine, nice 10 prosthesis. In this case, we go direct to implant and you can get that uh, excellent emergence profile from your implants after uh, six months uh, of uh, placement of the 10 prosthesis. So the question is that Teliocat behaves excellent with the soft tissue and all the digital workflow allow you to get uh, an excellent. This is the final um, framework for this patient. Also digital allow you to work in a different way, in a different way. For example, this is a patient the day of the surgery. This is the pre-op situation. And now we remove all those teeth, place our implants, and uh, this is the pre-op situation. And this is the first temporary prosthesis on your left, okay? So uh, very nice. The change is also dramatically for the patient, but we know, we notice that there are a slight deviation of the mid midline and also the occlusal plane is uh, slightly um, deviated. So we make a new uh, prosthesis based on those, on, those, on those data. And on the right, the patient now has a more clear smile and the appearance is much better. So this is done only on the design software by the dental technician, just with the picture, he can move, move everything and produce a new prosthesis. Now this is the mock, mock prosthesis we have to change. What I'm trying to tell you after talking right now, after talking about surgery, how to make the surgery, how to be sure you can load, is that the 10 prosthesis is again a diagnostic tool that you have to use on a daily basis to reach the final prosthesis. Even with the final, you can paint, you can modify everything, mixing the best of the analogical work and the digital work. Okay. So we have seen uh, we have seen some cases using the standard technique. Uh, we uh, we call all our techniques to be used with the full arch DI2 arch. It comprises different different protocols. The first one is the standard one, which is the one I show you where we uh, preserve some teeth. The, we have another one, which is the standard plus, plus or advanced. The standard plus of advanced is uh, a technique we are using uh, uh, um, a different way to work preserving teeth. And then, then we have the eye to device and the eye to device 2.0. Both, both eye to device and eye to device 2.0 our reference, surgical reference, we place in mouth to copy all the files, all the files. So basically, DI2 arch, it's a, it's a comprise of different workflows to fulfill all the treatments of the patient. This, is, this slide is in Spanish, but I can tell you that uh, um, um, we are stated that we use the I2 standard, I2 advanced, I2 device, and I2 device 2.0 to fulfill all the situation in our patients with a full edentulus. For example, a full edentulus with a complete denture, a full edentulus without a complete, a complete denture, a full edentulus with a trait tie-in, teeth tie-in, a, a, a hopeless dentition with a, you need to extract your teeth, what we call with compromise or without compromise, also revision surgery for failing implants, also guided surgery, also natural dentition and, and in all the indications. So those are uh, uh, different indications for all the techniques. And it is important to tell you that sometimes we use different techniques. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot present you the I2 device and I2 device 2.0 because we are on a, on, on a confidence agreement with the company which is developed, but it's going to be published on a quintessence book. It will be for my, my quintessence book. It will be available in October and we, went, we will be showing everything regarding different cases. For example, this case has been done with, with the I2 2.0. This is a failing dentition, same day of surgery. This is in the morning. And then we place our implants, our BLX implants, uh, uh, always with trying to be minimal invasive uh, with our surgery. 
time to provide the higher insertion torque and the higher ISQ levels, be sure that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm performing my surgery thinking on, I have to load that implants. So that's very, very important to make your surgery in a different way. And this is same day with the full um, digital bimaxillar uh, 10 prosthesis. A diagnostic tool, we need to change a lot of things in this patient, but she has changed dramatically from the situation you see in the pre-op to the post-op. We can place five implants in the upper, five implants in the lower, and now uh, um, two months later, we place one more implant uh, in each um, maxillary, all in the upper and in the lower. So she finished with six implants in the upper, six implants in the lower, because we grafted some places that we were with a, go, uh, uh, um, um, a high um, bone remodulation. So this is a, the case of this patient, but when we are reaching the final bridge, for, um, in one side we have the temp prosthesis, but we are, what are we doing to be sure that we can mill our file in a final material? We are doing the clear bar and the Sheffield test with the final. So the clear bar is a bar we are milling in, in, uh, in um, transparent um, PMMA. And thanks to that, this is done. This is done with the final file from the trios. We just place it, present it on the implants. And thanks that it is transparent, we can, we can see clearly how the screw are nicely placed in each of the screwtain abutment. So this is entering all of them. We are sure that we are making, uh, have, having the, uh, the possibility to check that that file is correct and we can uh, start to mill the, fi the final uh, framework. We always do it that way to be sure that all is perfect. So thanks to the transparency, we can clearly see through the bar how nicely the screw is entering the uh, screwtain abutment. This is very important to be sure that your, your final file is correct. For example, this is another case, another case uh, with the final framework, full digital, only with trios, with a nice passive fit. Those are uh, MIS implant with uh, intermediate abutment and everything is passive and this is the X-ray. We need to take into account the biomechanics with the dynamic load, the static load, the precharge of our screws and the passive fit of our implants. So everything has to be sub passive. We need all of us, we need when a framework is passive and when it is not passive. This is another case on BLX implant with screw retain abutment, trying the final framework, full digital only with trios. This case was done with the eye to device 2.0 and how nicely the uh, framework is entering the security in abutments. It's very important to be sure that your static load and your passive fit is perfect and the design is perfect to get nice result on the, on the long run. This is the final X-ray of the patient. Both frameworks, the upper and the lower are full digital with uh, eight implants. So this is our case, the case we were showing, I was showing you um, um, two minutes before. This is our case. So trying our clear bar. Now the patient is with, the, our, with six implants, six PLX implants in the upper, six PLX implants in the lower. We are just uh, trying to be sure that our final file with the six implants from trios is, is correct and we can load uh, our implants and we can mill the prosthesis. So this is the, the, the final situation. And th those are the uh, final frameworks. Those are milled frameworks from Createc in Spain onto the BLX implants. Take the conventional registration between them. We have the mounted articulation. This case was done by Arturo Godoy and it shows very clearly how we use our protocols because now we have our, this is the appearance of the soft tissue. Now we have on one side, the 10 prosthesis, the final ones. We have the printed models and we have the frameworks. 
So what we are doing is to send Arturo in Mexico, the printed models on articulators and a copy of the final uh, temporary prosthesis that the patient has in mouth. Now he has everything regarding functional and aesthetics. We send also videos, we send also uh, pictures of the patient uh, we use FaceTime to talk with the patient and with, Art with Arturo to, to, to have Arturo ready regarding the dynamics of the smile and of the, of the speech of the patient. This is, those are the models with the frameworks on the, on the right and with the, a printed copy of the temporary prosthesis of the patient. So Arturo can uh, um, mount and unmount uh, to his desire the temp prosthesis to be sure everything is uh, like in mouth. So a step by a step, uh, um, the dental technician um, work by hand. Just those are the upper and the lower, different um, stage of the treatment. Final one, and this is the work finish, upper and lower. This is on the left, on the left side, you have the previous situation of the patient and now the um, dental, gingival, dental gingival prosthesis to be provided on the patient, six implants in the upper, six implants in the lower. Very nice uh, behavior of the soft tissue on the ten prosthesis. This is the, uh, the final in the lower, and now we are going to place the final in the upper. So everything is perfect because Everything has been controlled from the very beginning, from the planning stage to the final situation of the patient on the left side before and after. That's the final situation of the patient. Everything from the surgery to the, fin to the finishing of the case with a nice prosthesis where we mix the best of technology and the best of the uh, dental technician capability, the, the handwork. This is the final smile of the patient final smile, final smile of the patient. Very nice case. Of course, it is very important to remind you that uh, the, uh, the, the maintenance of this kind of prosthesis is uh, mandatory and the hygiene process is uh, very important to maintain everything correctly. But I can, I can tell you that this is, those are very polished surfaces and we have no problems with that. We, uh, we um, remove the prosthesis once a year and everything is really uh, clean with no food debris on it. So we are really happy with this kind of prosthesis. I'm a big fan of them. Let me show you how uh, the soft tissue behaves in a bridge case with the teleocat and when everything has been tightened from the very beginning in a in medial loading case, uh, um, with teleocat, with BLX implants, sorry, those are BLT implants, bone level tapered implants with a scurritane abutment. Now, how nicely you can uh, use to modify the temporary prosthesis to modify your MS profile. This is the case I present you in the, on the very beginning. Do you remember the, the woman with some teeth? We use the IFT system, and this is the scan with the temp prosthesis when we are reaching the final. So we are going to provide her with the final excellent prosthesis. And in this case, we use, I'm going to stop this, uh, this slide just a moment. So the, do you remember this case? We did the mock-up, place the implants, place six implants. And finally, finally, we have the 10 prosthesis ready to be placed Sunday. In this case, we scan from the very beginning, the six implants we place in mouth. It means, that the file we have been using to make that temporary prosthesis is perfect in terms of uh, uh, passive fit and everything. So what we are doing is not to scan the patient again to make the final prosthesis. This is the temporary prosthesis. And with the same file we use uh, for, the, for, the, for the temp prosthesis, we are going to design the final prosthesis. So, I'm going to come back a little bit. So this is the temp, this is the temp, okay? This is the temp. We just scan the, the situation of the temp in mouth. This is the scan with the trios because with, with, we need, if you remember, we uh, adjust 
in some points occlusion and everything. And in the six months the patient has been waiting for the final, the telio has been uh, um, 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 re, uh, has been re remodelated in some situations, in some parts of the prosthesis. So we scan the, the temp prosthesis and with the same file of the initial um, uh, immediate loading, we, um, uh, uh, Arturo can copy the, the temp prosthesis in a final material. This is uh, Emax Circat Prime. Just one scan, the one from the, from the surgery. And with that scan, Arturo can make the final prosthesis. So it means that the last appointment for the patient is to remove the temp prosthesis and place the final monolithic zirconia. This is, a, this is a technique we are using a lot, provided we have scanned all the implants in the same, uh, in, this, in, in the initial scan, in the one we did for the temporary prosthesis, and, and provided we are using a dental gingival prosthesis. So we just scan the temp prosthesis to be sure that everything is corded, everything is in position. So everything, this is a copy of the temp prosthesis made in Emax Circat Prime from Ibocarb Vivadent and uh, just a copy of the temp. This approach simplifies a lot dental implant treatments because you need to take only one impression, one digital impression the day of surgery. And this is the final smile of the patient. This is the Emax Tilcat Prime. Some shots of the uh, disc. Arturo make a adjustment and make all the morphology, creates all the morphology by hand. Once um, everything has been finished, it's synthesized and he is placing Emax um, um, ceramics on top, um, Emax pink ceramics on top of the Emax Tilcat Prime full monolithic zirconia. This is a very nice um, um, monolithic zirconia because it's, because it's transparency in the, on the incisal part. So you can provide the patient with a, an excellent, excellent prosthesis. This is the final prosthesis for this patient. And this is the transparency of the incisal edge of the patient made by Arturo Godoy, titanium T bases on screw abutment. And this is the final, the final, uh, result with the patient. Final prosthesis and the placement again. Let's go ahead. This is the final smile. We need to treat the lower in the future. The patient is very happy and has changed dramatically his situation from the initial surgery. That's the x-ray with an excellent passive fit. So this is before and after. Very simple surgery. Do you remember it was a flapless surgery? Six implants. Um, we designed everything on the pre-op with the AFT system and we reach the final with a very simple approach. This is the final aspect. And that's all. I think this is a brief introduction to our work. And, uh, and if you have some questions, Hello. Thank you, Dr. Cuadrado, for this exciting and amazing lecture. It's very, Thank you so much. very, very exciting. Uh, I see is, if there is some questions from the Thank audience. Thank you so much. It will be great. Yeah. So what I'm, I'm, I'm going to, to uh, remark is that uh, we use the different tools and the different workflows to get a correct workflow on our implants from the very beginning to the final based on immediacy, based on a temp prosthesis, based on a different workflows to achieve the different uh, approaches and the different situations to treat the different situations our patients present to, uh, to our, our clinics. Uh. I think that the temporary prosthetic you used not only for aesthetic, it's only was a diagnostic. Uh, yeah. 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 And uh, through this temporary, you can uh, design the final with without uh, problems. 
Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, the problem is you find that in the temporary you you will not you will will not be in the final profit. Yeah. Yeah. That's very clear. Yeah. Yeah. We need to control the distance between the implants, trying to avoid more than 17 millimeters. You know. Uh, there are a lot of things. I, I always say that this is like a puzzle, you know, a puzzle, different pieces coming together, you know, yeah. and more than ever, I don't know if you agree with me, Dr. Amar and Dr. Abbas, uh, Amas, uh, Anas, sorry. Uh, it's like a puzzle that more than ever with digital and with the, the actual situation of the technology regarding implants, regarding um, all the hardware we use and the production, it more than ever it comes all together to to create a big picture more than ever we are thinking you are a surgeon as me and i think i, I can tell you that i'm i'm a better implant surgeon uh, now than i was 20 years ago and that's because i always think i am i'm always thinking where i have to place my implant to avoid implant to avoid problems with my internal scanner you know everything is everything is focused on the good result yeah i think so uh, I would like to ask you if you you use uh, always screwed uh, prothesis, screwed yeah. prothesis, not cemented prothesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's always a... or some cases. No, uh, always. I will tell you. I will say you that always. I, I'm. I'm uh, I, I like more uh, screw retained prosthesis than than cement, cemented one. You know, uh, mm -hmm. for me, it's uh, very important. Yeah. Is easier to use or easier to maintain for maintenance or what, what is your... Yeah, I think, I think uh, of course, are easy for maintenance uh, because you can remove it. Also, also for me, it's easier to do. I think that um, uh, you, you cannot be sure of a passive fit with the cemented prosthesis and uh, because you are using the cement to get your passive fit, no, no, because of, of those, 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 the space between the prosthesis and the abutment, and I think that the the possibility to to have your prosthesis ready to be uh, to be unscrew and remove and clean everything is very important. We always use it. Uh, formerly, for me, I can tell you that formerly, I will say, uh, before the uh, twenty years ago, sometimes we use in the more difficult cases cemented prosthesis but with the with the um, achievement of the angled multi-unit abutments and 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 the possibility even on the CADCAM software to angle the uh, chimney for your screw uh, everything has changed so we always provide our patient with the screw retained prosthesis yeah okay uh, also i want to ask if uh, after testing the implants after putting the implants and testing it with icq you found that it is not uh, good for uh, immediate loading what would you do with that uh, that's a very good question coming from a surgeon professor <laughs> i fully understand that because yeah. you know better than me the the, 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 the answering uh, uh, we only load those implants that fulfill all the requirements for immediate loading. If we place eight implants, we only, and two of them or three, are not, do not fulfill the requirements for immediate loading, of course, we do not load it. But if the implants, if the ASQ level of those implants are around 60, we will load it because all the 10 prosthesis is uh, joining all the implants together and it can be loaded. The question is that regarding uh, insertion torque, uh, uh, ISQ levels, and all this stuff, uh, I would say that the personal feeling of, this, of the surgeon is very important. You, I, I think you agree with me. The personal feeling, the experience of the surgeon is very important to decide if you can load or not load your implants, not only based on insertion torque, uh, um, ISQ level. The expertise is very important. Um, so the mixture of everything always drives you to, to take the uh, best decision in order to load your implants. But one, is, one, one, one important point, one important point, even if in, in case we are not going to load the, imagine the eight implants, we try to scan the eight implants. You know what I mean? 
Mm. We scan the Eden implants, but the prosthesis is done only on the five that fulfills the requirements. But doing that, from, the, from that day, we have the file with the eight implants scanned. Even we place the intermediate scan body. So we try to avoid one more um, uh, intraoral scanner uh, registration, one more uh, impression with the intraoral scanner. So we are doing that way from one year um, to the, you know, because this last year we are using the, um, the Emax Thirkat Prime very frequently, I will say a lot, because it's very simple to use, very, uh, you can copy the files easily and, 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 and you can get excellent results. Scan all the implants, not load with the initial prosthesis all the implants. You have the file. Okay. Even if we load some implants, we scan all implants. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Uh, the, the scan we, we do, we can use it all, all, uh, also for the final processes. Yeah. The file. That's the question. That's the question. Because because uh, on full edentulous patient, most of them needs uh, needs a dental gingival prosthesis. So the, the, the correction you have to do with the final file is regarding the soft tissue. So you can scan the ten prosthesis, even remove the ten prosthesis and scan only the soft tissue, not the implants. So you can mix both files, the three files on one single file and, and control the distance between the final prosthesis interior part to the soft tissue. So that's very simple, very easy to do and very convenient for the patient and for the working team. In one case, you you uh, I see that you you put the uh, temporary uh, or a copy of the temporary on an articulator. Yeah. Uh, for uh, to to mod to to make the modification to, the to, to yeah. make the modifications on the the articulator and then you'll make the final according to these modifications. Yes, yes, yes. Arturo, Arturo, we sent everything to Arturo. He has the same articulator in Mexico. So we send by courier everything to Mexico. And now he has the copies of the temps, the final frameworks, everything. So he can mount and unmount everything and make all the modifications. So that's, that's uh, very convenient for the, for the lab. And to be sure, as you told us before, that everything is in the correct position to avoid problems in the future. Yeah. Another question, please, uh, for the temporary, you make uh, the prosthesis without uh, function in the lateral movements. I think uh, we try to. When yeah. design, when design, when you design the final, you design it with the, without with another occlusion. Yes, yes, yes. The question is that I don't know what you what's your opinion, but sometimes we try to achieve an academical occlusion from the very beginning, and sometimes the patient is not comfortable with that occlusion. So. We try to modify it in the in the next temporary prosthesis until we reach a functional and aesthetic perfect situation. So we scan that prosthesis, make make a model, print a model with that scanning, a study model scan, and send to the lab to be copied the final situation. In fact, we have one case, one case that um, we performed surgery in 2017, and the patient comes two years and a half later. So the teleocat prosthesis was in function from two and a half years. What we did and everything was, you know, corrected with the, with the function, with the occlusion, the occlusal surfaces, he was, he was really satisfied with the prosthesis, no breakage with teleocat in two years and a half. So it show us that we have to duplicate that functional situation of the patient. So we just scan the prosthesis and mill it in, in, in Circonia. I think it's uh, very convenient that way you're working. Yes, yes. yes. Another question, please. Uh, I, I saw that in your cases, you, you uh, serve some uh, reference to tools like uh, molars or canines. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if, we have, if we don't have these references, that, yeah. I, I mean, uh, the patients came to us with complete identitism. Yeah. How can we uh, design the occlusion, the vertical dimension, yeah. the centric relation? It's, it's very simple to use. I didn't show, uh, under the concept of the DI to arch, we have, let's say, four different workflows. 
No. I show in this presentation only the standard one, which is preserving some teeth. Of course, in case, for example, a patient, as you told us right now, without teeth, with a complete denture, a patient with a failing periodontal um, dentition, with a big movement of the teeth. We need, you don't have reference in mouth. So the question is the, how to uh, treat that kind of patients. We use the I2 device. The I2 device and I2 device 2.0, those are surgical devices, devices I designed, and now it's going, it's under development because, the, but I, I, can, I told you, I cannot um, show how it works because it's under development with an implant company, but I can tell you the audience and you that this, it is very simple to use and it is only a reference in mouth to be able to copy all the files. So it's a revolution in implant dentistry because uh, two different approaches, the I2 1.0 and the, and the evolution is the 2.0 that allow you to treat all the patients. Even you can use the I2 device also when you are uh, in, in cases with teeth, with, no, with immobile teeth, because once you place the I2 device, you copy everything. So we are, we are changing the design of the I2 device. We are making some kind of bands based on our practice. We have been using the I2 device from the last uh, three and a half, four years with excellent results on a daily basis on the clinic. So uh, unfortunately, I cannot tell you, but uh, um, we can make another webinar for October. I will show you everything and, and my quintessence book in, uh, will be available, I hope, in October. Now I'm checking all the text, it, it can be shown. But, but uh, doctor, uh, doctor it's, it is very simple, very simple to use. It is our, uh, of our pleasure to meet you in a, in a future in other webinars to, uh, uh, to give us the full technique for all cases even for edentulous, for complete edentulism. I would ask you I, uh, also uh, about the intrabony sutures that you made for the flaps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, indicated for all, all uh, cases of, uh, uh, of uh, Flap, surgical sorry. flaps. Yes. With yeah, I would recommend it to use always when you are, um, when you are um, opening a flap, especially in the lower, you have a lot of mobile tissue, so the only way to fix that, that the, the floor of the mouth and the vestibular flap is to fix it to the bone. So you make a hole on, on the bone and then goes with your, with your uh, suture from the vestibular to the bone and then to the lingual flap and fix everything in the, in the, in, into the bone. So it makes no movement from your soft tissue. You can scan easily on your patient, but also it, it means a better post-operative period because the patient is not going with that mobile tissue that comes to, uh, to go uh, um, on, your, on your excretion abutments or your prosthesis, so everything is, is much clearer. Much clearer. But we use almost only on the lower, on the mandible, because on the upper, it is difficult. Sometimes we use it, but I think you agree with me. The problem is on the lower. In the lower. Yeah. Certainly in the lower, there is a problem in the mobility of tissues because yeah. the upper, the bellet is very... Yeah. yeah. That, case, that case I show is not a critical case because the patient has two or three uh, teeth on the, on the right side or left side, I don't remember. But the question is those cases with no bone, um, um, on 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 the dental nerve, you know, on the on the dent, um, mental nerve, and you have to place your implants only in the symphysal part, and it's very complicated. You have to open a flap to look for the for the mental nerve and everything, and then everything moves a lot. So try to make that uh, making those those fixation sutures makes your our life uh, easier, especially because we need to scan, and you know when scanning. The mobility of the tissue is the worst enemy of the of the of the trios, you know. So, so it's these, very common. these intra suit, intra bunny sutures are good for scanning and for uh, for for the uh, flaps to be stable. Yeah. Not only for scanning and for yeah. to to give a, a more success for the case. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
better post-operative period, less inflammation, everything is much better. Yeah. Uh, how many implants we uh, should be stable to put at him? Uh, I mean, if we have, uh, bottom, for example, six implants, uh, how many implants must be stable or uh, be for, for a full arch? For a full arch? For a full arch. We, for a full arch, if we have available uh, bone availability on the distal part, we will space six to eight implants. Six to eight. It doesn't matter if the upper or the lower. Six to eight. If we don't have a bone availability on the on the distal part of the bone, especially on the lower, we try to go to the pro arch or the all on four technique with four implants. But I, I always try to place uh, the 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 um, the bigger number of implants I can place, you know, to be sure that our case is sure in the future, always. But I will say that six to eight implants uh, per mandible in the upper and the lower. Usually eight in the upper, six in the lower because of the quality of the bone. In the lower, you you uh, you join all the implants with with, yeah. with the same framework, or we, you you separate some like the old theory of something like that. Yeah, we always join. Yeah, yeah. I have no problems. I I hear a lot regarding the midline and everything, the flexibility, but we join everything. All That's, the implants. And no problems in the in the lower. Uh, uh, until now. <laughs> it was an old theory. I think <laughs> let's let's wait. Let's wait. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, Doctor Anas, is there any questions? Yeah, we, have, we we picked some uh, questions from the audience and the from and the from colleagues. The first question is, uh, Doctor Quadrado, are you using multi unit uh, usually in the restoration yeah. of fully odontal respiration? One of my colleagues is asking. Uh, in the multi-unit, do the stability comes from, from the, the screw itself? So how you stay away from fracturing the screw during the processes or during the function? Mm, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Yeah, people here uh, think that when we have a multi-unit, yeah. so the connection, the inside the hexagon of the connection of the multi-unit is shorter than the conventional one. So they understand ah. that maybe the loading is on the screw. No, 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 no. Yeah. no we, need, I, I, we need some clarification. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Anas, for a, for a question. So uh, for me, for me, uh, the best the best uh, treatment is with uh, screwing abutments. So with uh, multi-unit abutments, it means a lot because you do, uh, the the soft tissue is going to heal better. And of course, it's better for the patient in the future. So uh, the, the final screw that, that um, supports the prosthesis has to be tightened to the correct um, recommendation of the of the of the to the correct recommendation of the manufacturer. And uh, and providing you have an excellent passive fit, you don't have to to have any problem. So I oh, should the, recommend to you. The, yeah. The second question is, I watched you before in Lebanon. Really, I thank the periodontal committee, the committee of periodontology and the San Jose University. We met you before, like three years ago. Mm -hmm. You uh, clarified the procedure, scanning the intraoral, making immediate loading. Mm -hmm. While I am attending there, I had a question. How could we be accurate with having multi-unit and going everything digitally and putting the metal workflow immediately on the implants. Do yeah. we have some variation and how you deal with this situation? Yeah. Uh, uh, what, uh, in fact, your question is, what can I expect on a daily basis from an intra scanner regarding the full art? Okay, uh, this is a complex question because out there, you know that most of the people is telling us that this is impossible. The cases I show you, this is impossible. Some people uh, tell me sometimes that, okay, you are placing a, a same day 10 prosthesis, but you ca it can flex and then you can cheat your, 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 your passive feed. Okay. This is not correct. The first, the first question is that uh, today, uh, treating the full arch patient with the intraoral scanner, it's a question that I can do it and I cannot do it. The question is that you need to think different. This is not only a question to scan a full arch with, with implants. This is a question of where I am placing my implants 
uh, how I am placing my implants. For example, a very clear question. Regarding the I2 standard technique, uh, I, preserving, I am preserving some teeth. It means that if I have six implants with six scan bodies and two teeth, I have eight uh, geometrical structures in mouth to be scanned. It means I have less edentulous spaces. It means that the distance between my implants are shorter than uh, in, in other situations. So everything, everything is focused to get an accurate uh, file. And I can tell you also, because I think we discussed it in Lebanon, we are not scanning on a daily basis at, as 3Shape is recommended us to, to scan the full arch in a completely different way. So the question is, somebody has to tell you how to scan, how to proceed, how to follow the workflow. But it is perfectly possible to scan without no problem the full arch with the with the yeah and you mentioned and you mentioned that sometimes you will rely on some of the implants not all of them uh, implants with, which give the ability to make the immediate loading the primary stability here we have uh, another question is do you use an accessory method an assistant method to prepare the implant site to gain uh, more primary stability for example do you use then saber do you mer do you yeah do yeah yeah, yeah, of any, course, yeah any bone condensing under under drilling under drilling uh, going for you have to use everything you have to plan your case in advance perfectly to be sure everything is correct for example to use the implant studio guided surgery to to be sure how the density of the bone is is you know everything to be sure that you can load your implants and while in surgery, sometimes you have to place a 4.8 millimeter implant, uh, but only with a two millimeter drill, you know? So you have to, to push our system, taking in care yeah, the- Yeah, uh, sometimes, sometimes you, you may use the under preparation or yeah, under of preparation of the final Longer. drill to gain, to gain a higher stability. Higher the stability. other question is about the Pontix. Yeah. Do you use uh, modified ridge lab Pontex, sanitary port Pontex? What the type of Pontex? Because you are doing an immediate loading. So the cleansing, how the patient will be clean uh, surrounding the, 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 the area of the implants. We use, we, um, um, usually we do not push the soft tissue with the, with the, with the temporary prosthesis. We, yeah. tie, we try to respect the morphology of the soft tissue of the patient. And really, so you prefer uh, the healthy the healthy Pontex, sanitary yes, Pontex, yes. and allow and allow the soft tissue to go to the to the to the to the teleocast prosthesis. Yeah. The, the the last question is the suturing, the suturing you use, suturing the bone and whatever. Uh, whenever, how long the sutures uh, are days. in the mouth? Ten days. Ten days. Ten Genius. days. Yeah, there is a and one in the type and the size. Oh, it's a, <laughs> it's like a, it's a mono mono filament. It's um, I think it's TC fifteen the the needle, but uh, I don't remember. It's like nylon, you know, or prolen or something. So it's a, a not, it's not um, not uh, silk, you know. Yeah. I don't remember the, the name right now. But one important thing is to leave the the when you cut. When you cut your your stitch, to leave it longer than the other ones, so you you can, you know who who what are the sutures fixing to the bone. Yeah, Doctor uh, Doctor Quadrado, I really uh, thank you behind my heart. I really very happy. No, no it's my heart. I, I really yeah. I really thank you all. all. I know that yeah. uh, because you are attending now in our university, you are doing the lecture. You respond to my questions. The invitation. Thank you a lot. I'm very happy that you accepted the invitation. Maybe Dr. Ammar Mustafa have something to say and to make a small concluding in Arabic. Uh, I wonder what Dr. Ammar will do. Dr. Ammar, the, all of us are uh, listening to you. Dr. Quadrado, it's a very pleasure that Thank I'm you, discussing Amar. you today. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I will speak a few, a few minutes in Arabic to conclude uh, all the lecture for our audience. Some audience don't, are, uh, 
very good in English. So I will in conclude the uh, lecture. <coughs> Excuse me. المحاضرة اليوم مثل ما شفتوا كانت عن التطبيق الرقمي كل كل شيء زرع يبدأ من التحضير أولا بالناحية الرقمية وحتى تطبيق الزرعات وحتى صنع التعويض المؤقت والتعويض الدائم كله صار رقمي فبيعطيني دقة أكبر بكل المراحل وحتى المريض بيكون مرتاح أكثر والعمل بالنسبة للطبيب أيضا حيكون أسهل والأشياء اللي كانت تأخذ معنا أشهر عديدة لحتى نقدر نعوض للمريض صار عم نقدر نعوض له مباشرة بعد قلع الأسنان أو بعد الزرع مباشرة التعويض هون ممكن إنه ما يستغرق حوالي 40 دقيقة فقط بعد الزرع بيعمل سكانينج مرة تانية لحتى يشوف السوفت شو شو تغير فيها وبيرجع بيساوي التعويض المؤقت بالنسبة للتعويض المؤقت عم يستفيد منه مو بس بالناحية التجميلية عم يستفيد منه أيضا ب تصميم التعويض الدائم يعني وقت بيلاقي في اي مشاكل اي اخطاء تجميليه او حتى من ناحيه الاطباقيه عم يعني تزعج المريض هي كلها بتلافاها بالتعويض الدائم وممكن يصمم تعويض دائم بيكون مريح جدا وتجميلي جدا وبتلافى جميع الاخطاء اللي كانت موجوده بالتعويض المؤقت اذا التعويض المؤقت اصبح مو بس وسيله لي للناحيه التجميليه او لحتى نحافظ على الناحيه التجميليه عند المريض وانما ايضا وسيله تشخيصيه لحتى نقدر نحط او نساوي تعويض مميز بالحقيقه التعويضات كلها كانت مميزه. النقطه الثانيه اللي ركز عليها الدكتور كوادرادو ايضا هي معظم الحالات اللي بيستخدمها اذا ما كانت كل الحالات بيستخدم سكرو ريتيند يعني التعويضات المثبته بالبراغي وليس سمنت ريتيند وليست ال المثبتة بالسمنت ايضا في تقنية خاصة في للدكتور كانت هي الانترا باني سوتشرز اللي هي انه بياخذ بياخذ او بيساوي زرع بيساوي خياطة من خلال العظم خصوصا بالفك السفلي طبعا المشكلة انه وقت عم يرفع شرائح كبيرة وقت عم يستخدم شرائح كبيرة فهالشرائح هي حتى بعد ما تخيطها بتضل متحركة فبتعملها سكانينج ما حتكون سكانينج مستقر لحتى يعطيك التعويض الجيد لذلك هو بيعمل خياطة من خلال العظم لحتى يثبت الشرائح ما تتحرك أثناء التصوير الديجيتال ولحتى يساوي التعويض المؤقت بالنهاية كان في كثير من الحالات بيستخدم أيضا لاحظة الأسنان نسمية الأسنان المرجعية يعني بيترك سن أو سنين هدول بيفيدوه وقت المخبر بده يحط الفايلات على بعضهم يركزون على بعضهم سواء قبل الزرع وبعد الزرع ففي عنده نقاط مرجعية بيستفيد منها أيضا في صنع التعويض المؤقات والدائم. <coughs> Finally, I would like to thank you, Dr. Luis Cuadrado. It was a very exciting uh, lecture. Thank uh, you so much. Yes, it's very, very, very exciting, very useful uh, for all, for our colleagues, for our students. Uh, we hope that in futures we meet you many times uh, to see more about your digital workflow in implants in all cases in, in cases of partial dentures or partial identalisms or complete identalisms thank you a lot it thank was so very much. very very exciting lecture and I, i would like to meet you again uh, as soon as possible thank, thank you. you so much thank you so much dr amar For me, it's a pleasure that coming from you, from your university, you value our, our work. It's a, it's a big honor. And of course, uh, I am devoted for anything you will need, you or your students. It will be a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me this morning. And I wish you all the best, all of you, your families and everything to stay safe and uh, everything goes better. So thank you so much and have an have a excellent day. Thank you. Thank you.